So we're talking about volume of the cylinder. And the way we start is by looking at a cylinder. So this is a cylinder. Right? And as you can see, it has a certain shape. Right? This container is And the way we're going to look at this shape, okay, and examine it, is with water. So if we take this shape, you can try to see as best you can through the container, right? Semi-transparent. When we pour the water in, it's going to go in, down, on the bottom, and what? It's going to go down, it's going to hit the bottom, it's going to spread out, and it's going to start rising. Well, it's spreading out into a circular shape. And it's rising, the fact that it's going up, up and down, means it has height, right? So those are the main components, but not the only ones. So the next thing that we do, let's write down, right here. It has height. And there's a circle, right? It's round. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to work with those, okay? To demonstrate its components, right? I'm gonna take this ruler, it's a tape measure. We talked about height, okay? And if we take this ruler and we run it from the base, let's just say this is the top. Let's make this the top, right? And we run it this high. If I look at this tape, if you can see, from bottom to top, we're gonna to say about eight inches rounded. That's the height. So that water is gonna rise eight inches, right? Which means we're gonna do this. Height. We'll make H, and that's eight inches. Now, circle's a little different, right? We don't measure circles, and we've talked about this. We have a water in here, so I'll cover it. We don't measure around. When the water hit the bottom, it expanded on the bottom. That's not around. That's area. And we talked about two parts, important parts of the circle. Okay? We talked about the straight line directly across end to end on a circle through the middle. The straight line directly through the middle end to end on a circle. That's called diameter. Okay? In this case, if I measure it with this tape measure, it's six inches. So we're going to say diameter, okay, and I'll write it out, diameter is six inches. The radius, the radius of this circle is half the distance across. It's from the edge to the middle. So I would actually be doing, if I measured it, the middle to the edge. That's radius, okay? But I don't have to do that because I have the diameter. And we just said that the radius is half the distance of the diameter. Well, if the diameter is six, one half of six is three inches. Now, before you learn volume, you typically learn area. Area is what you saw the water do. The water went in, hit the bottom, and spread out to cover the circle. So if this is a circle, if this is a circle, 
right here. What happened is the water hit the middle and it started what? Covering the whole circle. That's what area is. And a long time ago, maybe not so long ago, you learned that to calculate area, you multiply two things. Okay? We find the radius, which is halfway across. We just talked about that, right? Radius. But then you have radius. This is just halfway across. We want the whole covering. So we square radius. And then we want not just radius squared for the covering, but the whole thing around it. And the way we do that, it was something called pi. Right here is nothing but the area of a circle, right? The area of a circle is the radius halfway across squared to represent not just halfway across but the covering times pi. Pi represents the relationship of the circle circumference to the diameter. Okay, and there's a separate video on the origin of pi. But to find just the covering of the circle, it's pi radius squared. What's the other element we just showed? The, the circle on the bottom, the water hit and covered it, and then it rose. So all volume is, is taking the bottom circle, covering it, and raising it. Which means volume is taking the circle, pi r squared, right? That's the circle part. And multiplying it by whatever height it is. Okay? So you multiply your area of the circle by height, and all of a sudden we see, we already found it, that's your formula for volume. So how do we get our volume? We use the numbers we already found for this. Pi, just so we know, we'll put it right here, equals 3.14 or 22 seconds. Okay? They both mean the same thing. 22 sevens converts to 3.14. This, by the way, is a short inversion. We just use abbreviated. We know pi can go on indefinitely, decimal. So for pi, we're always going to use, or most of the time, 3.14. So equals 3.14. That's pi. What is radius? Well, for this, we had a di diameter that was six. We know our radius is not the full way, but half. So half of six is three. So our radius is three squared. And now the water raises. We want to find out how much this is going to rise up. Well, we measured the height. And we said about eight inches. Eight inches. Now you have your numbers. The formula always goes first. That's the map for where your numbers go. All I do, I do my easiest stuff first, order of operations. Now it's 3.14. What is 3 to the second power? It's an exponent. 3 to the second power is 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9 times 8. Now we do our next multiplication, right? In layers, we work in layers. 9 times 8 is 72. Now we have 72 times 3.14. 
Right? Okay. 72 times 3.14, and we can do this on a calculator, right? And we will, right? If I were to do this, I would turn my calculator on, can't really see from there, and I would type 72 times 3.14, enter. And I would get 226.08. So down here, I would put 226.08. You can see that my bottle is anyway. Okay? Unit of measure. When we use the tape measure, we use inches. Inches. You put inches, but there's one more piece. If you look at the formula, you are actually multiplying three different pieces, right? There's the pi dimension, there's the radius, and there's the height, three dimensions. That's why they call shapes like this three-dimensional, okay? So we're gonna call this inches cubed. By the way, the other way you can look at this, just an aside, radius, radius twice, height. If you wanna look at that, you three measures, okay? With with a rectangular prism, length times width times height. We don't want to get off topic, right? So let's look at this. We looked at our origin using our container, right? Water goes in. First, you have to cover the circle on the bottom and account for that. We did that. Covering on the bottom of the circle is area of the circle. Then we saw it rose, rise, height. We did that. We measured it. Here's our height. Then we put them together. We put our height of eight inches. We know that our circle, we measured across the bottom. We got a radius of three, right? The diameter is six, the radius is three. We squared it. And then we multiply both by pi. So basic procedure. Volume equal pi r squared times height. You know why now. Plug in your pi, 3.14. Plug in your radius. Square it. And multiply by your height. Do your square first. Multiply your numbers. Multiply by pi. Your unit is always q. Inches, feet, centimeters. Be careful to distinguish on a problem whether they give you the radius or the diameter. If they give you a full diameter, you have to cut that in half. Okay? So hope this review of the volume of the cylinder was helpful.